What is going on traders? Welcome back to The Traveling Trader. In this video, I'll be going over an update of the 10K Challenge portfolio. As I said before, anytime I make videos on the 10K Challenge portfolio, I will leave the hashtag 10K Challenge in the title of the video. So you will want to watch out for that if you wanna track the progress of this great project that we're working on currently. For those of you that are new, the 10K Challenge, I basically started with $10,000 because I wanted to show you guys how to properly distribute your portfolio, how to properly budget, position size, take risks, et cetera, and what types of stocks I would build a portfolio around if I was starting today. Also, the reason that I started with 10K and not a higher amount above 25K is because I wanted to limit myself to a lot of the constraints that the typical retail trader who was starting out would be limited to. So no day trading, I have to wait until funds settle. I don't have a big enough budget to sell cash secured puts, which is a tried and true easy strategy to make money if you do have a larger account. Selling cash secured puts on something like Tesla nets a very good profit for me month after month. So let's go over the entire portfolio. I'll tell you what changes we recently made, give you some updates on the positions, and tell you what stocks I'm going to be looking at, both to add to the 10K portfolio as well as in general. And I'll also give you a little bit of a market update that will coincide with the picks that I'm making. And if you're confused about any of the option strategies, the good news is I just released my long-awaited options course that I've been working on since the end of last year. It took me hundreds of hours to put this thing together. In my opinion, the most comprehensive options course available. If you want a coupon for $100 off, the link is in the description as well as the pinned comment. But as always, purchase is not necessary and I just appreciate your viewership as well as you clicking the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't done so. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So here is the 10K portfolio as it stands. We are currently up $332 in just a few short weeks. I think this has been out for two to three weeks at this point. This amounts to a little over a 3% gain, which is respectable. Here are all our holdings along with the number of shares that I bought. You could see that I'm keeping the portfolio distribution very deliberate here. I'm not going heavy on any single position because you want to make sure that you're paying attention to your portfolio distribution, especially when creating a new portfolio. I see a lot of new traders get convinced to buy stocks like Plug or Fubo or ChargePoint or NNDM. These stocks that have a lot of hype behind them but are unproven, they do have a lot of growth potential, but they are at, at the moment unproven and they continue to do things like stock offerings, which dilute the price and bring the, the stock price down. It's okay to invest in these things, but I see a lot of portfolios that are mostly made up of these stocks. So if you've been asking yourself in recent times, why is your portfolio tanking while the markets are absolutely ripping, they are creating all time highs on a day to day basis. But a lot of new traders feel like they're down. They talk about these deep red days when the markets are making all time highs. There shouldn't be that wide of a disparity. And if there is, that means that your portfolio is most likely made up of junk. That is part of the reason why I started this challenge to show you how deliberate I am with position sizing. So. We have three shares of Disney. We don't even have a full share of Tesla because I didn't want to make it overweight in my portfolio. However, on Tesla, we are up currently 18% because we bought the dip at a nice support level. On Disney, we are currently up uh, almost a percent on Disney. I just bought another share today, so that brought down our cost basis, or sorry, brought up our cost basis on NEO. I think we're down a little bit. We're down 5% on NEO. Won't look to add any shares here. We already have 10 shares of NEO. On Baidu, we are currently up 11% since buying the dip. Might add another share or two there in the future. Royal Caribbean, which is a reopening play, up 7.5%. That's the other thing. Sorry if I'm interrupting while I'm showing you the portfolio, but there is some commentary that, that I think is important here. Is The portfolio distribution also includes a healthy mix of growth stocks as well as value stocks. As you've heard me say in recent videos, this is not the environment for penny stocks in my opinion. While you could still take a stab at a few penny stocks here and there, it, the, the risk on nature of the market is just not there anymore. What investors are trying to do now is either put their money in growth 
or put their money in value. And growth stocks, examples of growth stocks would be like Amazon, Microsoft, etc. Companies that incrementally grow year over year at a rate that's high enough just to beat inflation. So we're not expecting these to moonshot every year, but over the course of the long term, they grow, hence the term growth stock. Value are companies that are currently undervalued for one reason or another. So like the cruise lines and airlines are undervalued because of the price that they're supposed to be trading at if it wasn't for the pandemic. QQQ, which is the NASDAQ ETF, I will be adding to this. I'll be talking about the NASDAQ in a few minutes, but I will be adding to this once the NASDAQ drops again. We currently have only one share of this. I do wish I did go a little bit heavier when the NASDAQ was at the 100 day moving average, which is when we bought this, and the reason why we're up almost 10% on that position, but I will likely be adding to it if we do see another drop in the NASDAQ, which is very likely, and I'll talk about why. Chewy, which is, we, we bought at the dip after earnings, I believe, is up uh, almost half a percent here, not even quite half a percent. Nike, which is a reopening retail play, up 3.33% on this. We have Palantir up almost 14%. Three shares of Teladoc were up currently almost 8% on this position. Snowflake, which was just beaten down, we got it at a nice discount, up 4% on this. TSM, which I have high hopes for in the future once they figure out how to get over the chip shortage up over 5% on this stock. Groupon, which is a reopening play. You guys have heard me talk about Groupon and how I would buy Groupon on any sign of weakness up over 5% on this. Penn National Gaming, which was an overreaction. It took a hit after, I guess, a sex tape of Dave Portnoy was released, but was happy to buy it on the dip, now up 5% on that play. MP made a monster move today. We're up 8% on MP. Fubo, which we took a hit on, we're down 6% on Fubo, but I would likely just hold this. We only have about 15 shares of Fubo, so our current market value is just around 330 bucks, not even 5% of the portfolio. FTFT, this is one that we're down on. This one I might actually offload, but FTFT currently sits at support, so it, I never, I make it a point never to sell at support. Now, if it breaches the support level, then I will likely offload it. But I am waiting for the Coinbase listing, and I also want to see, you know, what if, if Bitcoin's price as well as Coinbase can have a sympathy effect on FTFT sitting here at support. So I'm not offloading it just yet. But if it closes below this support line, I will definitely be offloading this. Either way, not a big position. Our total position amounts to just a little over $110. AMD, we have seven shares of. I think this might be the largest single holding in the, in the portfolio, down 4%. AMD has earnings coming up. I expect a pre-earnings rally or at least a post-earnings rally. So I'm, I'm okay to hold this. DraftKings, we caught at a nice support level, up 3% on DraftKings. We closed our position on Peloton. We had a losing spread on Discovery that we closed and salvaged uh, at least half of the value of that spread. We closed an XLE spread for 30% profit today. That was a debit vertical spread. Again, if you want help trading options, I suggest you get the course if you want to, because I go into how to trade verticals, iron condors, diagonal spreads, calendar spreads, etc. Other than those spreads that we closed, we don't have any current options plays on the 10K challenge. And by the way, if you want access to all of my trades and you wanna follow this in real time, sign up to our real time alerts in the elite trading group below. Not only for the 10K challenge, but for the overall portfolio as well. All right, so what stocks am I looking to add? Well, I'm looking to add NNDM here. Looking at NNDM, it is at current support level, trading just under $8. This support level goes all the way back to December 2020. MRO, which we've talked about before, this is going to be leveraging the rising prices in oil. Again, we closed the XLE spread, which is the energy ETF of the S&P 500. Because the oil prices rose, we were able to close that for 30% profit. I'm waiting for MRO to break out of this pennant here and if it does break out then I will likely enter a position here with a target of around $13 currently trading at around 11 bucks and 30 cents as I said added to my position of Disney I'm very bullish on Disney for the reopening as well as for the rest of 2021 combining the stellar subscriber numbers that we see on Disney plus along with the fact that Disneyland is going to be reopening at the end of the month here in California. So targeting a $200 short-term price target for Disney. As I said, I did up the number of shares in our 10K portfolio. All right, now onto the market analysis and why I hedged my portfolio using a short position on the NASDAQ. So 
SQQQ is an inverse ETF. And for those new traders, an inverse ETF means that it trades inverse to the actual index. So QQQ is based on the NASDAQ. SQQQ is based on the NASDAQ as well, but it's the short version or the inverse version of the NASDAQ. So when the NASDAQ goes down, the SQQQ goes up, right? It's, a, it's basically a short position. Now I bought calls on that meaning that I'm expecting the NASDAQ to decline or I want to protect against the NASDAQ declining. This is a hedge position, not a main position. Shouldn't be a large portion of your portfolio, but just a hedge position to protect against losses in the event that the market draws down. Now, here's the reason why I do think we might be in for a NASDAQ drawdown. If you look at the NASDAQ, you see that every single time that we create these rounding bottoms at all time highs, we tend to pull back and create what's called a cup and handle or similar to a cup and handle. Now, the reason we do that is because obviously investors are wary at the top and a lot of times we see profit taking at these resistance levels. So we are now forming a rounding bottom here at the top of the NASDAQ and we could easily see a situation, especially with earnings coming up, we could see a situation where the market draws down in preparation for the earnings season that we're going to get on most of the mega cap tech stocks in May, and that will allow the market to then go up further. But we always see these pullbacks. You see the, the pullback here, you see the pullback here. After creating these rounding bottoms at the top, even back here in 2019, we have this pullback. So I'm expecting to see something like that. Obviously, I could be wrong, but this is why this is a hedge position and not a main position but I did buy calls on SQQQ. Now you can make this for, in my opinion, for around 1% to 5% of your portfolio, depending on how many NASDAQ stocks you own and how overweight your portfolio is on NASDAQ stocks. Just to wrap things up, as I said, you want to make sure that your portfolio is well distributed. There are those analysts that say you have to be in mostly growth stocks or mostly value stocks. Again, I think that is overplayed, but you do need a good mix based on what is going on in the current market. This market is not favorable to risk on assets, which if your portfolio is full of NEO and Plug and NNDM and Fubo TV, as well as some of these other penny stocks, you are getting killed. That is why your portfolio distribution should be mostly made up of quality growth and value stocks and you can reserve a nice subsection of your portfolio, a small subsection of your portfolio for riskier plays, but it should not be your overall portfolio. So if you're finding that the market is ripping higher, making all time highs every day, and your portfolio is super red, take a minute, take a few hours actually, go over your portfolio, pour over it, and do a full audit and see what it is that you can offload and what of these undervalued recovery plays you can put your money into instead, as well as some of the mega cap tech stocks that, that might draw down here in the coming days. Anyway, traders, that is it for this video. To follow the 10K challenge in real time, sign up to the trading group below. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. Hit that notification bell. Leave a big fat thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know which one of these stocks you're currently in. If you're loving this challenge or not, I would love to hear any of your opinions if you have them. Stay safe out there, traders. Peace.